Welcome to VMSource's video iSCSI Storage and VMware vSphere 5. This is method 2, implementing multiple storage paths and using jumbo frames with two vSwitches. You're going to want to connect to an ESX server. In this case, we're going to connect to an ESX server by hostname. Remember, if you have it configured hostname resolution in your environment, you can always use the IP address of your ESX server. We're going to install the certificate and then ignore the warning. And here we are at another freshly configured ESX server. Just as with a single vSwitch configuration, the first thing we're going to want to do is go to the Configuration tab and choose Networking. As you can see, we have only one vSwitch configured right now. Let's begin by configuring this vSwitch. We'll choose Properties, and we'll go ahead and edit the properties of this vSwitch. We're going to set this vSwitch, vSwitch 0, for an MTU of 9000. Now that we see that the MTU is applied, let's go ahead and choose Add, and we're going to create a VM kernel connection. We're going to leave the default network label alone and append our label to it. We'll place the VM kernel on our storage network. We'll assign this VM kernel an IP address on our storage network. And before we close, we're going to select our VM kernel and choose Edit and set an MTU of 9000. Unlike in using a single vSwitch, there's no need to come to NIC teaming and override the switch failover order. This VM kernel will only be associated with one NIC at all times under any circumstances. We'll go ahead and choose OK and then close. Now, using a multiple switch configuration, we're going to need to add or configure a second vSwitch. So I'll choose Add Networking. This will be a VM kernel. It's going to use the unused NIC in our system. We're going to label this We're going to place it on our storage network. We're going to give it an IP address on our storage network. We're going to click on Next and then Finish. And then just as before, we're going to go back. We're going to edit the properties of this VM kernel, and we're going to set the MTU as 9000. No need to set the failover order because there's only one NIC associated with this vSwitch. And now, as you see, we have two separate VM kernel connections on two separate vSwitches with one or more physical NICs associated with each vSwitch. One thing I want to make sure of before we move on is that I've set the MTU on the vSwitch itself for 9000. If you fail to set the MTU on each of your vSwitches for 9000, none of the following configurations will function correctly. MTU 9000 looks good. MTU 9000 looks good. Now having verified 
our iSCSI network configuration, we're going to go to Storage Adapters. We'll choose Add. OK. We're going to select our iSCSI software adapter. Choose Properties. Let's go to Network Configuration. Right now we have no port bindings. Let's choose Add. In this case, because we're using a multiple vSwitch configuration, it doesn't know which of the VM kernel adapters to select. We're going to start with iSCSI 01, which is associated with VMNIC 0, and we'll choose OK. We'll choose Add again, and we'll choose iSCSI 02, which is associated with VMNIC 01. We'll choose OK. And we'll go to Dynamic Discovery and input the IP address or IP addresses associated with each of our iSCSI SANS. As before, we're going to check static discovery. We should see all three of our targets. If our iSCSI SAN has multiple IP addresses, We'll also see each of those IP addresses reflected here. We'll choose Close. Allow a rescan. And there we have six targets, three devices, six paths. As you can see, each iSCSI target has two active paths, but only one associated with I.O. Let's go to Storage and choose our first LUN, and Properties, and Manage Paths, and then we'll select a path as supported by our storage vendor. If Round Robin is supported, it could conceivably increase the efficiency of your I.O. traffic significantly. And we'll do this for all three VMFS volumes. And there you have it, implementing iSCSI storage with jumbo frames and multiple storage paths using two completely different methods. In method one, we used a single vSwitch supporting multiple VM kernel connections, and then we used the switch failover order to make only one physical NIC available to each of those VM kernel connections. In method two, we simply created two vSwitches, one VM kernel per vSwitch, and we did not have to override the virtual switch failover order. Either way, we got two storage paths per target, a total of six storage paths for three targets, and we were able to set the policy round robin on each of those storage paths. Thanks for watching our video. I'm John Borhek, Lead Solutions Architect for VM Sources. You can call me at 215-764-6442, extension 1001, or send me an email, john at vmsources.com. Goodbye.